Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion. Your host, the Hut, as you know, this is the best Mets channel on YouTube. And to be honest with you, I need you to subscribe and like the video along the way. But uh, as you know, if you've watched the Mets this year, one of the biggest problems they had was their starting pitching was terrible. They let the league in walks and gave up a lot of home runs, a lot of first inning runs. And as you know, if you follow baseball long enough, you know that uh, when you get up runs in the first inning, it puts your team behind the eight ball right off the bat, or before you can get to the bat. This is from SNY.TV. This is from John Harper. How Mets can improve their pitching staff behind Cody Senga. Now, Senga, since the Mets traded Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander, he has pitched great. I mean, he really has pitched great, you know. Uh, he's going to get a lot of Rookie of the Year votes. He's going to get a lot of Cy Young votes now just based off of his performance over the last month. Uh, the Mets' sell-off at the trade deadline has created an air of mystery about just how committed they'll be to winning in 2024. But if owner Steve Cohen is looking for a reason to up the ante, so to speak, Cody Senga may just be providing it. Quote, He might be more of a number one than most people thought he could be, myself included, one scout told me. This is after his start against the Mariners. And I would mention the Mariners, they, they've they been hitting like crazy. The Mets shut them down, believe it or not. Quote, I think it took him some time to gain confidence that his stuff will play against Major League hitters. And now you're seeing him attack hitters aggressively and throw more strikes, which sets up his splitter as a true wipeout pitch. His diamonds could help convince the Mets they could contend next year if they add to their rotation. Now, a couple of things. Uh, the big player, the big player that will be uh, brought into the United States and, and in North America will be Japanese star Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Uh, he is the considered the best Japanese pitcher right now. He's 24 years old, 25 years old. He's considered to be better than Kode Senga according to people that have seen him and have seen Senga. Um, and he kind of fits the mode of what the Mets are trying to do, trying to get younger. Like I said, 25 years old. He's going to get a massive contract. Now, he plays for the Oryx Buffaloes. Now, they're going to post him, meaning that they will offer him his contract up for the highest bidder. So the highest bidder, say, for instance, say, for instance, the Mets bid, they send money to the, to the Buffaloes, say they send $10 million. And then maybe, say, the Yankees... Uh, sent him $12 million. Well, they, the Yankees at that point, and I would mention they're going to go scout him next week in Japan. Uh, Brian Cashman is going to go check on him next week. That's the rumor. Then the Buffaloes will award uh, the negotiation rights for Yamamoto to the Yankees. So at that point, they have a chance to negotiate a contract and it's like any other contract. If he, if he doesn't want to sign with the Yankees, he goes back to the Buffaloes, and then I guess maybe next year they, they could do the same thing, post him. He's the unknown. Obviously, you know, players from Japan, they're, they're the unknown. But uh, Senga has created such an interesting dynamic here because he has taken a major step forward as a guy that could be an ace-type starter, which I kind of thought that he could be. But I guess maybe he was kind of in the shadow of these, these veteran players. And now that he's had a chance to sort of breathe a little bit and have some time in the United States to pitch, I think he's done a, he should have taken that step forward. Um, now, a couple of players you need to keep an eye on. And a couple, actually, let me just go back a, a second. Billy Epler signed uh, Shoei Otani. He signed Kode Senga. He's also uh, somebody that scouted Masahiro Tanaka, who was a pitcher with the Yankees for a long time. And he was the scout, the primary scout when he was the assistant general manager. So he is well-versed in Japan in terms of, of the dynamic there. So he has an inside track in terms of just uh, getting a player in here. Um, now, now, we could talk about Otani some other time. That's, he's, a, he's a bigger issue, a bigger situation than, in, than right now. I don't know. He's not going to be pitching anytime soon. Uh, in this article, they mentioned Julio Urias. Now, he's 27. He's the youngest player on the, the free agent market. However, if you follow me on the Baseball Hut 2, he was just arrested for domestic battery. 
So he might be on his way out of Major League Baseball because he's already been suspended. He was suspended in 2019 for domestic abuse a few years back. So he could be on the way out of Major League Baseball. Uh, and the article also mentions Jordan Montgomery uh, to sort of fill out the rotation. I will throw a name out. I've talked about him a few times. And that is Aaron Nola. He's an innings eater. You want a guy that's going to just load up on innings. I mean, so many games, the Mets, were, the Mets stars were coming out in the third, fourth inning, and, you know, and they just burned out that bullpen. You know, you've got to shorten the game. And the best way to shorten the game is have a guy that is going to get close to pitching 200 innings every year. Uh, a couple of interesting notes in this article. Guys to look for in terms of trades. Uh, the Brewers are an interesting case because, as you know, the rumor is that David Stearns, uh, exa- one of the executives there, is probably going to be coming to the Mets as a president of baseball operations. And obviously, that would give the Mets an edge if they were interested in, in making some kind of deal for either Corbin Burns or Brandon Ro- Woodruff. And, and, and as you know, Burns had a bit of an issue last year. Uh, had a bit of an issue last year when he went to uh, his arbitration here. It didn't go well for him. He, he got his heart, feelings hurt. His feet feet hurt. So he, don't do that. You, you, know, you want to hear what other player, what your team thinks about you. Brandon Woodruff is another guy to keep an eye on. But Corbin Burns is a guy that the Mets could try, try to make a deal for because they can use their prospect uh, depth now. For a trade and a pit for a pitcher, they need another starter in here. So that, so these kind of things the Mets can do. Like I said, you sign Yamamoto. We'll see if they can they can win the posting. You make a trade or you require another starter in here that can be an innings eater or better than that, and then you kind of go with with Senga and Otani. I mean not Otani, Senga and uh, Quintana. Now they mentioned a couple other names. Uh, the, I would say. Be wary of them. Be very wary of them. Tyler Glasnow of the, of the Rays. Shane Bieber of the Guardians. Word from the Guardians is that Bieber, his velocity is down. And the thing about the Rays and the Guardians is that they, they want to move a player that you think is good. Don't go anywhere near them. Don't make a trade. Don't touch those guys. Because I cannot think of the last time where they've, those teams have gotten burned by a player of note. Shane Bieber is a player of note. Tyler Glasnow is a player of note. They also mentioned in this article Mitch Keller from the Pirates and Pablo Lopez from the Twins. Um, you know, but we will see as we get closer to the offseason. More rumors will be popping up. But these are some of the names you'll be hearing a lot about over the next few months. As you know, the Mets have a farm system. You'll be hearing about Mike Vassell, who's been up and down. A lot of guys in double A, Christian Scott, uh, Tyler Stewart. I think he's on the injured list. Uh, Blade Tidwell, who's pitched well in Brooklyn, and then he went to Binghamton. So keep an eye on these guys. You're going to hear a lot about them in spring training next year uh, when we get around to it. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.